Hey everybody, it's your girl Claudia Jordan. It is Wednesday and we're back with TGIF. We're here to spill the tea and break down the biggest headlines in the news and on social media. And later on the show, we're catching up with the amazingly talented and funny Paula Jaipaka. Now sit back, relax, get ready for this hot tea. Please welcome Al Reynolds. What's up, Al? Hey, hey, hey Claudia. How's it going? Very, very good. And please welcome Funky Dineva. What's going on, team? Y'all ready to... Uh... Cut up in this New Orleans sun down to the Essence Festival. Oh my God! I'll, I think I'll be there tomorrow night. I get in Friday morning. Try I'm to find trying a to get there tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> Funky was being so shady to me. Listen, y'all don't know Al wanted the buddy pass girls. Al don't never want to buy a buy a. Not uh, true. Uh, listen, every time Al gotta go somewhere and be there on the weekend, he gotta fly in on Wednesday or Tuesday. <laughs> he be on the standby list, <laughs> and he couldn't get into New Orleans. So where you back at home, Al? You know what? I don't leave until tonight, Funky. Thank you very much. Oh, mm, that ain't what the text message you sent the group <laughs> earlier said. No, I'm saying that, that I don't know if you guys know, but a bunch of flights have been canceled, and well, my flight was canceled. Oh, so uh, like, okay. I, my bad. I, I assumed you were yeah. already at the airport. No, no, I wasn't at the airport, but I mean, a lot of people in the north, I think you talked about this, Q, yesterday, didn't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of flights were canceled, so my flight ended up getting canceled today. So I'm rebooked on a different flight. So I hope I get on. All right, well, I hope so too. Well, we're looking for photographers. So New Orleans photographer people, we need a photo shoot for the TGIF crew. And I am uh, putting. And we pay. We got our money. We got our coins. <laughs> <laughs> hey, a, a quick uh, hit. I want to just get into real quick. Madonna was found unresponsive and has been hospitalized due to a serious bacterial infection. She's expected to make a full recovery, but they said she was rushed in a couple of days ago and it's not, it wasn't, it was looking pretty bad. So I guess our thoughts and prayers are with her and I hope she's okay. What y'all sipping on tonight? I was sipping on some sweet tea, but I drank it all during the sound check. So I'm going to go get some more during the break, but sweet tea, I'm unlocking my better self. Y'all see the weight gains coming on. I, I had a, a, a meltdown earlier today because I had to do an interview and I didn't like the way my face looked. It was looking fat. So it, it gave me low self-esteem for a minute. <laughs> you really uh, think your face looks fat? In, the, in this particular interview, I had just woken up and it was all swollen. I'm just not used to it, but yeah. Oh, okay. When you get older, of, your face starts getting swollen too sometimes. Yeah. Retain water, all kinds of things happen. I switched out my nose ring. Let's see. Oh yeah, it doesn't look like you got something on your nose. Yeah, that was saying that to you every show. Exactly. I was so goddamn tired of y'all talking about, here, wipe his nose. <laughs> All right, y'all. Let's, oh, Al, are you drinking? Yes, I'm having wine, white wine. Okay, I'm just drinking water tonight. All right, we're going to kick this show off with an update on the Carlisha Hood story. All right, uh, real quick, I just want to say the other night, we reported on this, but Carlisha Hood, uh, well, the, the, the prosecutors have dropped the murder charges and Kalisha has now filed a lawsuit against the city of Chicago, uh, the arresting officer for false arrest, intentional infliction of emotional distress and more. As you recall, Kalisha uh, reportedly texts her son while she was in a restaurant when she was having an argument that turned physical. Uh, she asked her teen son to come in and bring her gun and the teen came in and uh, shot at Brown and uh supposedly Carlisha told us her son to continue shooting and then the man ended up dead. Now, what do you think about this new development that she is now in turn, you know, turning around and suing Al, what do you think? Well, you know, I gotta say, I, I really like the fact that she got off. I'm glad that Kim Fox got this one, right? She reviewed the tape. She said, listen, this looks like self-defense to me and therefore we're dropping all charges. Now, with that being said, I'm not sure how I feel about her countersuing. Maybe the countersuing is, is a way of deflecting so they can't appeal Kim Fox's decision. But the countersuit to me is like, I, I don't understand if someone was killed, they left the scene of the crime, the police went and picked them up at their house after they reviewed surveillance, um, a camera surveillance. I really thought at that point the police were doing what they knew at the time in which it was um, reviewed. Luckily, Kim Fox overturned it, and now she's a free woman. Okay, Q, what do you think? All right, so guys, we have to stand and make a huge, 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 huge correction slash update because they ate my ass alive on my personal YouTube channel and in the comments. There have been conflicting reports regarding if she texted her son and told her son to come in 
or if her son came in on his own recognizance. Some people are saying that Jeremy Brown's girlfriend is the one who concocted this story about she texted the son. The general consensus between the Chicago constituents and some news reports have now updated. She did not text the son to come in. She did not call the son to come in, despite the fact that that is where we got some of our information. So I want y'all to understand, it's not like we were sitting up here falsely reporting information. As I said on my YouTube channel, there were credible news sites saying in the initial story, and a lot of people came under my page and said, yes, we in Chicago, they were saying on the Chicago news, she texted the son, she contacted the son. The people are now saying that is not true, that the son was present. He heard what was coming on. She did not summon him. So I wanted to clear that up before they ate us up. That being said, you still told your son to shoot his ass again, and y'all damn left. Quiet as it's kept, you got away with murder, regardless of if it was warranted or not. I think you got big nerve to be trying to sue the city. I do. I honestly think you should leave it the hell alone. Leave it. I, I wish I, I wish um, Durandis Pace was alive so she could say, leave it alone right now, because God's got it. You need to leave it alone, sis. And this whole damage my reputation and embarrassment stuff, you and your son got away with murder. Leave it alone. And y'all need to probably be figuring out how to, I ain't even gonna go there. Leave it alone. There were a lot of conflicting reports when the story came out, like almost every story nowadays. And it's so difficult to navigate through it. So we always strive here at TGIF to get the facts correct. Al, what do you think about this? What do you think about this update? Oh, you already went to me, but I, I'll say it again. Oh, my bad. I, I, I agree with Q. I, you know, I'm glad that she got off on the road. I'm glad Kim Fox reviewed it, but I'm not sure about this suit. I'm, I'm, I'm like Q, like, geez, because I think what happens when you poke the bear, especially the city of Chicago, we know how the city of Chicago responds to these types of pokings. You know, they may find another way to appeal the decision of Kim Fox, to overturn the decision of Kim Fox, and you can define yourself back in a murder trial, not just for one of you, but for you and your son. They did it before, so I went back. All right, so Nicole B said her child is going to need therapy probably for the rest of his life. And Jeremy Hill said, leave it alone before they start looking for other stuff. I agree with Jeremy Hill. And Nicole, I understand that he may need therapy for the rest of his life, but how is that the city's problem? Right. Yeah. All right. Moving on. We'll definitely keep y'all updated when as this story unfolds. Now, Donald Trump continues his reign as the dumbest criminal after audio recordings were released of the former president discussing the classified White House documents. Trump revealed in the audio tapes, these are the papers. And he referred to something as being highly confidential. Let's take a listen. This totally wins my case, you know. Mm -hmm. Except it is like highly confidential, yeah. secret. <laughs> this is secret information. I think we can probably get it. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. Yeah, we'll have to try to de figure out a, a yeah. See, as president, I could have de yeah. it. No, I can't, you know, but this is yeah, classified. Now, now we have a problem. Isn't that interesting? It's almost like he's trolling us because they said that he knew he was being recorded. Now, in an interview with Fox News, Trump claimed that he didn't have any documents with him, that it was just a case of bravado and him just lying on his dang. That's basically what they're saying. Uh, Al, what do you think? You know what? This president, to actually hear a former president of the United States committing multiple felonies on audio, it's just downright laughable at this point. And now his own legal team is saying that this will definitely change the case. I think we, I hope this ends him up in jail because this man has no respect for the rules. He has no respect for the law. He has no respect for the Constitution. He has no respect for this country. And he has no respect for his role as the President of the United States. This has to end. And let me tell you what is even worse. The two women that were in the room, can we guess what color they are? And that's the reason why, I remember, in his last election, he overcame because the large number of his support were overwhelmingly a lot of white females. And there they are giggling with a criminal and supporting it. We need to open our eyes. All right, Q. Listen, y'all. I'm so goddamn sick and tired of these goddamn papers. Listen, at this point, 
at this point, I'm ready to throw my hands up in the air and say, fuck it. The papers can't be that goddamn important if they in damn Iron Mountain boxes scattered around dusty-ass Mar-a-Lago. Between them goddamn papers, them emails, and Hillary Clinton sending them over to Benghazi, wherever the hell been. I still ain't found out where the hell Benghazi at while we at it. <laughs> yeah, no. and, and here's the thing. And Al, maybe you can help me out with this. What makes these papers so valuable. I understand that they're classified, but what about having them in his physical possession makes them so powerful? Because it seems to me that it's the information that is the power and not necessarily the physical piece of paper. And he had access to the info. He could have just screenshotted it with his phone. So what is the importance about physically possessing these quote unquote classified documents? Well, in this particular case, Q, um, A, it's classified and it's confidential. It's supposed to stay where it's supposed to stay. But in this case, he had the plans of attack on Iran. So he has all of the scenarios that the Department of Justice or the Defense Department had come up with as a plan to overtake an enemy. They are our enemy. So for that type of information to be in his personal possession really compromises the entire country's security, if you want to be honest. Because think about it, anybody would pay millions on top of millions of dollars to get the tactics of the United state's um, armed forces. The stuff, and to add on to that, the stuff that Donald Trump is being accused of doing, if a regular citizen, a civilian did that, we would accuse, accuse them of potential mm -hmm. espionage. Espionage, oh, yeah. that's right. But that's exactly what those papers could be used for. And they may that's very right. well may be something that we may not deem that important, but there's stuff in there that is. And, you know, right now there's a lot of stuff. All right, let's read some uh, of the comments. Uh, RP said, I'm sick of this clown. It's beyond sad with what he gets and will continue to get away with the privilege. Um, Tanya Christopher said, he is less than intelligent and he should know better after being recorded before. Jay Boogie said, we don't have no type of person that should be president right about now. And JZK1990 said, Benghazi people, Benghazi people, Benghazi people. <laughs> Come get these papers. <laughs> All right. And the, th the sad thing is, you know Trump kept some of the stuff. Like, I don't even know if he's going to be trying to sell those secrets, but he want to show off, like, it's like a, yeah, a, con a dick swinging right. contest. Look what I got in my, you know. Yeah. You know he wants to use it for that. All right, fellas and soulmates, let me get into your thoughts on this post from Glorilla. The rapper posted, all that fake classy shit you hoes be on to impress these niggas whole time niggas love ghetto hoes. <sighs> I got a headache from that reading that. And the way she spelled these was D-E-Z-D-E-S-E. D -E -S -E. Um, fellas, soulmates, is this true? Our fellas off classy bitches and they want a hood bitch. Q, you know I gotta go to you first because this is all. He know yeah. about the hood. Well, she talking about your mammy know about the hood, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> she, she talking about, listen, she talking about them fake ass 201 popular street holes in Memphis. She talking about them fake fashion over Memphis holes that try to act classy. Classy men like classy women. All the brothers I hang around with that's college educated, that's in the Greek life, that makes six figures, that got careers, would never bat an eye at a ghetto hole. They'll hunch one. <laughs> they'll stick a couple of dollars in her down to the strip club. You know what I'm saying? They'll, uh, they'll rent her out on a vacation weekend in Miami, but that's about all she gonna get. At best, she'll get a dinner, at best. Um, but that is not the truth. Fake ghetto, fake classy dudes like ghetto girls. Real men with class, the, 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 the bankers on Wall Street, the, the 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 lawyers on Park Avenue, they ain't coming to Memphis to get no Glorilla. So nah, Glorilla, I think your the lens by which you're viewing this dating situation is very uh 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 you know minimal and 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 and, and confined from your experience. Alicia Joyner says, but they do like hood, and I'm from Memphis. And Nicole B says, does she like men? Al, what do you think? Hey, you know, this is let's define what ghetto is. Ghetto Glorilla. Room, ghetto people. They're supposed to be loud. They litter. This is in the dictionary, y'all. The Urban Dictionary. They loud. They litter. They smoke <laughs> and drink alcohol too frequently. They That's loiter. Except Wait, litter. They, they loiter. <laughs> they blast car music. They wear <laughs> gold fronts, and they don't know how to handle their kids. And a lot of their kids are illegitimate. Oh shit! Is the that's, that's the whole. That's all. 
But Minus you want to go see that's all of us except the no, kid. But you you want to know the thing that sticks out to me most is that's the most like makes you want to clutch my pearls. Litter. It's the litter. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you had to go out your way to to define that action. Like it really. And you know somebody... you see your ghetto friends litter. They'll take the paper what? off of something, toss it right it, out the window. No, I it... did litter the other day and I felt awful about it. <laughs> Let me tell you something. It took a white person on an anthropology or sociology <laughs> to observe ghetto people to pick up on the littering part. Because right. I've been to the hood 900 times, and if you would have asked me to describe ghetto littering, would have how about never. Loitering? Q, how about loitering? Oh, uh, uh, loitering, of course. <laughs> Listen, ain't nothing like a craps game in front of the corner store. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> loitering, craps. We do like the black, we do, you, that, listen, that's all the let out is after the club, one big loiter. We uh -huh. love the loiter. As a matter of fact, I don't know about y'all, did y'all used to go to the let out? Like, we wouldn't go to the club. We would get dressed and just go to the let out. Yes, right. 1,000. Atlanta used to have, uh, was it 112, that club? It, it, outside the parking lot was outside even was more better fun. better than inside. That's what I'm Man. saying. So it's littering, being loud, go front, skim, control. The we have a lot of those characteristics here on TGIF. <laughs> not me, girl. Please. Not me. You loiter. I'm, I'm you loud. loud. No, 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 honey. I do not loiter. I make too much money to loiter. I am granted you loiter. access. You I am do granted loiter, access. Let me sit behind bars. That's, that's better than loitering? <laughs> you forget <laughs> stuff you be telling us on this show, Q. Come on. Right, Q, you, you look at you right now, you're like, oh. Oh, I don't loiter, but I'll shit behind the dumpster. <laughs> don't call me ghetto. <laughs> okay, we're we're kind of ghetto. How about that? We kind of ghetto. Is that a, is that a compromise? We're ghetto adjacent. There you go. We ghetto adjacent. We're ghetto adjacent. I went to college. Okay, I'm not ghetto. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Coming up, we have the fabulous actress Paula Jai Parker coming to join us. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to, to uh, welcome back to more TGIF. Now tonight's guest is a world-renowned actress who starred in some noteworthy classics. Here with us to discuss her new film, Kings of LA, Paula Jai Parker. Hey, Paula. Hi, baby. That's my Klausia. How are you? Because I've known Klausia since we were both babies, but she was always just a baby baby. Because my mom's name, I tell you this every time, my mom's name is Claudia. So every time I see you. You just give me that. I, I just think of mommy, so I think of love. Aww. It's always been love. Always oh. consistent love. I, I haven't love. met. I don't think I've met anyone else, but you well, guys you are mean, cutie pies. You You're meet cutie. us now. Hey, Miss Hey, Paula. Hey, cutie <laughs> pie. I do think I got to meet um, Al. You, yeah, Al. Mr. Al. If, am I mistaken? I think yeah, we, we were. Met. Yes, sir. I thought okay, we did okay. get to me. I did get the smile. honor because of Star. You know, right. I do remember being in your company. So, yes, it's great to be here. And, yeah, you're making well, me blush. I'm, I'm okay, very thankful. Okay. Well, well thank we are thankful to have you. So let's get into it so we can start giving you your flowers. You have star starred in, in so many TV shows and films over the years. And you always been 100, so yeah. You, you. Thing. You bring so much charisma and fun to all your roles. So what, what's been your favorite role so far of all of them? Proud Family. The Proud Family, hands down. Even, you know, it, it messes with my ego a little that I'm not on, like my face isn't on. But knowing that my boy, uh, Bruce, Bruce Smith, Oscar winning um, animator, created the character with his wife, who I happen to look exactly alike, and me in mind, it it kind of feeds my little ego. So I'm okay that I'm a cartoon character and I get to do so much with my voice. Because I'm a, car a cartoon character, I get to put so much more into my character. Cause you know, I don't, I don't have to worry about how I look. I get to go, I don't have to do all of this. My baby mm -hmm. should know it's not necessary. I don't have to look like Donna Summers. You know, I was like, toot, toot. Hey, beep, beep. <laughs> you know, I'm feeling Donna. I'm, I'm kind of, you know, feeling Donna Summers right now. So going to work at Proud Family, all I got to do is go. Like, they don't care. Like, they they do have a, um, a, a visual a video camera there so that they can match our, you know, movements with our characters as we work, you know, so 
but they're, they're not looking at me like, is she looking cute? They're just kind of looking at, you know, trying to imitate my movements as I say the words to what they create in animation. But so, I don't yeah. want to, you know, talk about oh. Proud Family this whole oh. time. I love you, Proud Family, but this is about <laughs> the kings of L.A. You know, Paula, I'm actually glad that you did bring up Proud Family because I do have one quick question. But I will say you have played some very memorable roles. And Paula, I must say, I didn't know what a hoochie mama was until I met you on Friday, right? I didn't either, girl, baby. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't, and, and I didn't Paula, either, baby. <laughs> it's, I got a whole script that I'm supposed to be reading right now, but could you just give us the you ain't got the lie, Craig? You ain't got the you lie. You ain't got the lie, Craig. <laughs> you know I love your mama. <laughs> I, I, love I, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love you for showing love to that film because that film is what set it off. You know, for, you know, my baby, you know, shout out to all my, my set off ladies. But yeah, that film is Gary. You know, he did both. That film has lasted my entire career and that's been 30 years. And the fact that I did that film about almost 30 years ago and people still respond, people still love it. People still ask me to say those lines. Don't have to apologize. I'm honored. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Paula, when you speak about your career, like as a Hollywood vet, you've been known to be vocal about the journey and how to navigate that um, through various obstacles, especially in this entertainment business. What keeps you going strong in your career over all these years? Exactly what you said. Like, um, this is the first time that Disney has given me an opportunity to talk to young people. And the fact that I am very um, into giving back that information. I went to Howard University. So part of the curriculum is giving back. You know, mm -hmm. they literally drill it into our heads that when you meet young people, it is your responsibility to share the wealth, which means share the wealth of knowledge, share the wealth of talents, share whatever you can possibly share with the next one in line. Oh, I and, love that. I love and that. And that is what I'm all about. And I think that's what keeps me motivated in this industry. And like I was saying, Disney gave me the opportunity to be a mentor in the Disney Dreamers Academy program, which is a program that invites the top, the creme de la creme of high school seniors to Orlando, get them in one place and allow, I mean, we're talking about kids that have their own businesses. They have their own um you know, give back funds, you know, what are they, those, uh, what are they called? The, the, that, not what I have a corp where I make money, but the corpse where you don't non -profit. make money. Non -profit. Non -profit. Come yeah. on, baby. You know, my, you can definitely be on my team when we play charades. Cause <laughs> you're going to have to do this, try to figure out what's in my brain. But yes, these kids have nonprofits that are bringing in like six figures and there are seniors in high school. And I'm obviously I don't have one because I don't even know what it's called. But, you know, <laughs> I'm in that direction. You know, they've inspired me and being able to inspire them and in return be inspired is why we do this. And I think people forget that. But well, I'm. They're showing you a lot of love in the chat, saying the movies that they love you in. They love you. Trina 05 says, I love her in Sprung. And I want to get into this. You're still going strong from that. You continue to work. And you have a new film out right now that's called Kings of L.A. Let's take a look. Our boy Van. Come on, Claudia. <laughs> South Central is the main artery of Los Angeles. It runs through the middle of everything. What do we got to be afraid of, huh? Remember who you are, not who people want you to be. You don't think I know your secrets, boy? All right, Paula, tell uh, us about the movie and how did this film- Van Elder, he is everything. Like, you know, he's a young director who's young in the game, but not young in age. He's wise beyond his years who's had this idea literally for 10 years, we've been trying to make this film happen. Mm -hmm. um, I have clearly been his muse for a long time, but this role he wrote for a man. And this is the first time I've been given the opportunity to play a cop. 
Um, I don't know why, but it's just, you know, I think I've done it on TV, you know, like little blurps, but I've never really been able to delve into the mind of a cop. And this project is a love fans love letter to LA to Inglewood. It's about like, and it's so crazy because I star in this film with Michael Pere, who is an old school vet and Slink, you guys know Black Jesus, Slink Johnson. So yes. the, Slink is an LA native and a lot of the scenes that I do, it's like, it's like Shakespeare because I don't know what I'm saying. Like a lot of these songs didn't get to Cleveland. I'm from mm -hmm. Cleveland, y'all. Mm -hmm. So Slink, it was like, you know how when you mispronounce somebody's name and they're like, my name is Amaran. And you're like, oh, I'm a dad. And they're like, no, I'm a dad. And you're like, oh, my dad. And you, they're like, no, my dad. And you're like, Bleh. you know, that's what it was like. So this is this song. I'm going to say this, Paula. I'm going to say this. I didn't mean to cut you off because we cut for time. The movie does definitely look amazing. And with everything that's going on in Hollywood, you know, it's so important that we support independent films. Yes, please. Love doing that at Fox Soul. Why is it important that people support independent because films? Because I'm trying to tell you till you cut me off. I'm this sorry. This <laughs> is about L.A. Oh. language, L.A. culture, just like uh, Friday was. Like when I did Friday, I really didn't know what I was doing. I'm from Cleveland. So I was doing something that transcended what my mental capacity could understand because I'm from a, the other side of the country. Mm -hmm. That's what this movie is like. It's like doing Shakespeare. There are some scenes in there. I don't know what the hell I was saying. <laughs> and that's what I was trying to tell you. All the like, time, girl. It's, it's it's cocaine, not lemonade. That mm -hmm. song didn't come to Cleveland. I'm sorry. <laughs> but if you can relate to that song, you can relate to this movie. It's like oh, that's Godfather. Nice. That's Don't nice. look away. It's very linear. We're going to, he's going to, he's going to, he's going to switch scenes on you. And you're not going to know whether you're in the present time or the past, but you have to pay attention. And huh. if you can get into it, like you got into Godfather, you'll get into this film. Paul, I'm surprised we never talked about I, I lived in Cleveland for three years. I went to Baltimore. And I used to work at Tower City downtown. Of course you did, because you're pretty. Uh, <laughs> pretty girls. Cleveland, Dorothy Dondridge, Halle Berry, get into it. Jane Kennedy, yes. Come on, Jay, yes. So, Paula, outside of acting, the fan, the, the viewers all want to know. Now, you've taken a, a dip into the reality world, reality television world, when you was on Hollywood Divas. Would you be open to do more reality in the future? I and did would. you want to whip someone's ass? I would, I would go back. I would revisit Hollywood Divas because mm -hmm. we got some unfinished business. Ooh. Come on. Is there, any, yes. is, there any chance to, is there any chance the show may come back? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what, you know, my, my, my queen diva who runs, um, you know, TV one and TV uh, radio has in mind, but you know, they own the rights to that, that, you know, brand, but I am open to any type of reality that allows me to produce. I am a firm believer that reality just happens. You don't have to write it, especially when you've got a nutball like me, <laughs> you wouldn't believe that the first season we were able to just live life and we were able to, you know, take what really happened in life and use that to to tell our story but you know after that they started writing and it was like scripted and because I'm an actor I could do that but then when they started I was like you know Waldo and all the jokes were on me like everybody got their you know improv points mm -hmm. and I was the only one who didn't get the get the memo so it was like let's see how we can fuck with the hoochie mama America's favorite hoochie mama you know, I don't know if that's a good thing or bad thing, but no, I, I, I I own it. I, t I, I totally understand what you're saying. You have no idea. Everyone's in on it but you and you yes, later on and you're out. Like, and then, where's yes. Ashton Kutcher? Is, is, am I being punked here? What is going on? I feel you. So thank producing. you for giving me the opportunity to talk about that. This movie, check it out. Um, We're going to be on Voodoo. We're on Amazon because Amazon's got my heart. 
Um, uh, check out them. Yeah, we're I'm, on Amazon. I'm going to say all of them so they can say, make sure you do, support Mama. our girls. I love you. Movie. Yes, <laughs> Kings of LA now available on various digital platforms, including Redbox, Voodoo, Amazon Prime Video, YouTube, Google Play, and Apple TV. Paula, thank you so much for coming. See, y'all didn't see my girl Claudia coming. Y'all didn't know baby girl was a journalism. <laughs> y'all thought she was just a pretty face. <laughs> hey, coming up next, a throwdown in a Florida courtroom and later find out which celebs are living their best life during Pride Month. We'll be right back. Welcome back to TGIF. We got uh, quite a few people in the chat. They saying she is the fourth host of the show. I enjoyed her. It was refreshing to see someone so happy and smiling. I want to see the movie. Hit the like button to ban these commercials. Uh, <laughs> and people are just going on and on and on. The chat, y'all are so messy in the chat. You know what? I can't with y'all. Listen, hey, whether good, bad, or ugly, or just plain dumb, the tea is always overflowing with crazy news stories out of the beautiful and classy Bay state of Florida. And I say that with all sarcasm. And that's why we are giving you the 411 in What the Florida. In Florida news, Joseph Zeiler was convicted of double homicide and decided to turn up in the courtroom by elbowing his lawyer in the face during his sentencing. Take a look. Go ahead and defend that, Funky. Go ahead and defend that. I dare you. Come up with something for that. Defend no, your a, Actually, do you see the, the, the way I cringe? Absolutely not. I mean, where's where's Carlisha Hood's son when you need his ass? Okay. This is who yeah, they this is who you need to be shooting the hell up, quiet as it's Kevin. I don't even understand why this white man so mad for some damn murders his ass committed in the goddamn 1990s. Hell, you should be used to being in the damn prison. What you mad for, bitch? Did you miss lunch? You miss child time? This, uh, I can't, I can't, I can't defend that. that. That's Florida. When they say Florida, man, they're not talking about the young supper girls like me. They talk about that right there. That That is Florida, man. Al, I think we wore Q down. He's now just, just <laughs> throwing up his hands and saying, yeah. <laughs> okay, another Florida news, a half-naked man was caught by authorities after speeding and causing multiple hit and runs. 22-year-old Stephen Peterson took to his dangerous joyride to an elementary school and then drove around the track and later drove into a wooded area where he was dragging out of his car wearing socks and a small wrap around his waist. Is this Florida, Q? Listen, listen, I almost went to jail naked, okay? Driving around in a car. This is very common behavior. This man was outside to the pool. He needed to run to the store real quick. That's how I went to jail. I was outside at the pool in my swimming trunks. I had to get in my friend car real quick with just my swimming trunks on, no shirt, no shoes, and ended up getting pulled over. So these types of things and various other things like this can happen. Now, where he went wrong is when he told them other people's stuff, but ain't, ain't nothing out of pocket about him being half naked driving. Al, this is just a whole world that we are just not a part of, you and I. <laughs> we are just not. All right. A woman in Jacksonville, Florida, claimed that she caught someone stealing her granddaughter's birthday cake during the party. Take a look. So I see the girl walking with a cake. And it's my lady's birthday cake. So I go up to the lady and I say, excuse me, bitch, this is my cake. And then had the nerve to take my baby name off her cake. Took my baby name off her cake. Uh, Scott uh, S. Scott says, never short of foolery in Florida. Al, what do you think about this story? Oh, uh, listen, <laughs> who steals a birthday cake? I mean, come on, who steals a birthday cake? And when I saw that family, they looked like the Urban Dictionary definition of ghetto people, to be honest. I mean, I, I, this is embarrassing. I was embarrassed for I was embarrassed for them, the family. It was a complete violation. These people need to be sent to jail for the simple fact of their stupidity. But I will say this though, that grandma right there, she don't look a day over 40. So whatever she doing, she needs to bottle that and sell it because she looks good. She threatening bitches who steal the cake. That's what she's doing. <laughs> You're hunching at 15 and having babies. What the hell are you talking about? Let me tell you something. One thing about it now, y'all expected me not to, not to accept this for Florida, but this is Florida all the way. It's a, it's a very unique part of Florida called Jacksonville, Florida, a.k.a. Duval, Florida, a.k.a. The Dump, okay? 
Jacksonville, Florida, and I'm sorry, Soul Mace, and those of y'all from Duval, but it is the dump of Florida, all right? And th those people that you saw, they were ratchet as hell, and they was giving a straight-up Jacksonville tease. I could 100% see them people stealing. And I'm going to tell you something. It ain't, it ain't the stealing the cake for me. It's the smearing the baby name off. The name off. It's the smearing the name off, which meant y'all was finna have a whole celebration with somebody else cake and sing happy birthday. That is a new type of low to me, but I don't expect anything different coming out of Duval County. Ray Chelly825 says, was it a Publix birthday cake? <laughs> it looked like it might have been. And CJ90 says, the stuff don't shock me being from Florida. Fish Eye Jedi says she was hungry. Being hungry is not a crime. And Courtney and Rossi said the ghettoness of it all. Mm -hmm. All right, that was a lot of fun watching Bucky try to defend his place. Soulmate, if there are any leads on Florida news, and we got a lot of people that sent in that, that birthday cake video. Thank you so much. Make sure you send them to our personal Instagram pages, myself, Al or Al, because Funky might not get them to us or Fox Soul, and we will definitely get to them on the show. All right, y'all, keep it locked because coming up next, celebs clap back at haters over their pride activities and later find out what club Kim Kardashian has admitted being a member of. We'll be right back. Welcome back to more TGIF. Now your favorite celebs were out and about celebrating Pride Month and so were the cameras. Bravo TV's Andy Cohen was secretly videotaped enjoying his Pride celebrations with a friend. Now the video shows Andy rubbing the chest of a shirtless man seated on his lap in a gay club. Now is this an invasion of privacy or what? Al, what do you think? You know, I think Andy's way to, um, what is it, veteran in this celebrity thing to like let something like this happen. Of course they have phones at the club. Of course they're going to be videoing him because he's there. But well, 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 this is, we have it out now. It's always been rumored for years that he likes black and brown boys. And obviously he also liked black and brown nipples, right? Now that he's exposed, though, I will say this. Can we finally, Andy, can you please finally sign off a green light, some content with black and brown boys on Bravo, the same way that you do for the black and brown women? Do you think he was exposed, though? Isn't he pretty open about being gay? I don't think it's exposed like that. I think everybody knew that he was gay. I just think it was him being exposed doing something that, you know, freaky or sexual okay q what do you think you know the one thing that sucks about this business and all of us can attest to it is that you are not allowed to have a personal life or if you are it can't be one that deviates far from the brand that you created for yourself and that's why i intentionally made sure and i learned from whitney houston i never got into this business trying to be super clean because I knew that that would not be something that I'd be able to uphold on an everyday basis. And um, I'll say this. I know people who have partied with Andy on his off time. And um, what's a good way I can put this? He's just like me and you. All right. He's not all pulled up in suit and tied all the damn time. He has fun and gets I guess ratchet's the best word to use in this instance, like everybody else does, who's regular when a camera is not around. I'm going to leave it at that. Yeah, like I'm just like, this is, you know, it's not a gotcha moment at all. I also don't think it's an invasion of privacy if you're outside and you're, you know, if you're outside, you're kissing someone or rubbing on somebody's nipples and you have to expect that someone's going to see it and someone's going to say something. Right. And I don't think that was, and I also don't think it's a negative. That's who he is as a man. That's who he is in, in, in his sexuality. And so what? Let him live because we don't all probably rub some nipples out in public somewhere, right? Or outside in the pool, Vegas, something. All right. He, we have he probably was saucy. He, he, listen, the CNN, and I don't even feel out of line saying this, the CNN uh, New Year's thing, you see how saucy, why am I being nice? Drunk. You see how drunk them hoes get on the CNN. So he probably was drunk or tipsy having a good time. You should be required to be professional at work. And then when you're off work, you should be able to have fun as long as it's not like, you know, breaking it and make, you know, committing crimes. Uh, Cash Green said, that's that man's business. Keto G says, you're in public. It's not an invasion of privacy. Two times two says, child, I used to see him in the club all the time with us. 
Max Him said, it's the price cue, like you said, all the time. Yeah. All right. Another celeb celebrating, a spotted celebrating pride was Dennis Rodman, who's at a Houston, Texas pride parade dressed in a plaid skirt. The former NBA player clapped back at the haters online and said, do your research, guys. Hashtag Ben Him. What are your thoughts on Robin's response? And more importantly, what do you think about the outfit? Can we see that outfit one more time? Can we production? <laughs> Let's get into that outfit. You know, while they're pulling it up, you know, I just thought about something. The LGBTQ plus IAQUZ community, we actually need to build a statue of Dennis Rodman because Dennis Rodman was trailblazing gender bending roles before this was even a movement before we had everything going on and he was doing it in a male dominated arena he was doing the the nails the 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 the, the quote unquote women's clothes and i don't even know if we're even allowed to say that anymore is there a such thing as women's clothes he was doing the gender bending way back when and so you know for that this ain't nothing for Dennis Rodman. Dennis, Dennis Rodman has been a lgbtq advocate before being an advocate was in vogue Yes, yeah. he was. I think I think that um, Dennis Rodman was probably the best gender bender of history, Q. And the thing that I liked about it was that he has dated some of the most beautiful women in entertainment. Carmen Electra, he dated Madonna, he dated Tony Braxton, and our own Vivica A. Fox. You know, the best thing that, uh, the most interesting thing that I find about him, though, is we've never heard any any type of, or seen him with the man. We've never seen him with a man. We've never heard no drama with him around a man. So this shows us that you don't have to be gay to be gender. Non you don't have to be gay to be gender non-conforming or to support the LGBTQ plus community. And I love that. Dennis Rodman and I did Celebrity Apprentice together and we were on the same team. It was a year that all the black people were on one team and all the white people on the other team. And we had one white person on our team. Every black person on our team got eliminated, like in a row, like every week they said, y'all lost, y'all lost. I was like, God damn, like, really? We never win a challenge? Anyway, just a little tidbit for you. Uh, in the comments, we have Tiffany HR said, I love that man so much. Sean Alexander said, Dennis, been that girl, even if you liked it or not, he was doing it and brave. And uh, TT Tish TV said, leave Dennis Robin alone. He's rich and been about it. He married himself, dressed in full wig and makeup and a wedding gown. All right, Dennis, we gotta get Dennis Robin on the show sometime. I, I think did. we can make that happen. I got his connects though. We'll, uh, Dennis, we reaching out to you. We're going to be in touch. Coming up, lab grown chicken. Ugh, we'll be hitting the show soon. Will y'all eat it? Let's take a look when we come back. Not me, girl. Welcome back to more TGIF. Listen, we hear pretty crazy stories uh, pretty much every day. And these next set of topics got us saying, Not me, girl. Not me, girl. Not me, girl. <laughs> <laughs> They don't add to my voice to it. That is too cute. That is too cute. Now, during this segment, we're going to discuss a topic, and we'd like for the soulmate to let us know if you're in support, <laughs> you're with it, or it's simply not for you. All right, the USDA has approved the sale of lab-grown chicken. Are you guys in support of, or what does Funky say? Not me, girl. Let's see what the <laughs> mm. uh, uh, why, why are you pulling those chat questions together? I, I, I think the FDA in the USA, uh, after we tear down the N NRA, that we need to come for the FDA because when you look at what they pass for food over here in comparison to other countries, them people do not have our best interest in heart. They are straight up fucking us for cash, but they fly under the radar because y'all too busy keeping y'all bites big and want to eat whatever the hell y'all want to eat and have access to cheap food that y'all don't get outraged over the shit that they sell us. Or whatever. It's all the wide bike girls. It's their fault that the FDA feed us whatever the hell they feed us. Okay, Al. <laughs> I'm going to say that I'm going to say not me, girl. Um, if it's not farm to table, I don't want it. But I will say this. You actually have been eating lab-grown chicken for some mm -hmm. time. Um, it's an initiative that's been going on for the last 10 years to decrease animal welfare, to um, improve safety, um, food safety, especially contamination with chickens, and also to reduce pollution because of the methane emission that's created around the chicken farm. So. Unfortunately, Q, you've been eating it. If you have nuggets from McDonald's, some of that could be lab-grown chicken, 
etc. They say, do not look at a chicken McNugget from McDonald's under a micro- <laughs> microscope. You will be <laughs> disgusted. I'm going to say, not me, girl. But again, we've already been eating that because I eat from, 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 from um, uh, what's that called? The, the one place? Chick-fil-A, Popeyes. Chick-fil-A, Popeyes. Mm-hmm. Popeyes, every time I eat it, I'm always like, this don't feel real to me. All right, y'all, let's move on. Uh, reportedly, a man reportedly died after attempting to drink 21 cocktails on a bar menu while vacation in Jamaica. Are you guys up for the 21 cocktail challenge or not me, girl? Now, y'all both about to lie because I've been around both of y'all and y'all have both done 21 drinks. So who wants to lie first? I ain't going to lie. I'm going to say yes, God, bitch. Okay, because I'm sure. I am sure I have uh, completed a 21 drink. But here's the thing. If I have done a 21 drink, thing on a on a trip it's been at an all-inclusive resort and in my defense they water the drinks down anyway they'd be tasting like water uh, eat uh, uh, so. okay you know me i'm definitely gonna do a 21 drink challenge but i'm not gonna try to do it all in one sitting and there's a thing called the dram shop laws which means a bartender cannot serve an intoxicated uh person so he should have been cut him off because that's against the law to serve him at the state that he was in only for it to lead to his death all right. Kim Kardashian reveals she was part of the Mile High Club and prefers makeup, sex over angry sex. Are you here for sex on flights or would you say not me, girl? And do you prefer makeup, sex over angry sex? Q? Not me, girl, because I'm not going to jail. All right. Y'all already got me. <laughs> Y'all listen. I've already done did it in some places I had no business doing and I got away with it. I'm all right with that. I'm not going to jail. It's too much going on on these airplanes. And as far as angry sex or makeup sex, I don't like either. Um, I, I don't like either. I, I don't. I don't like any of those emotions being attached to something that I deem beautiful and soulfully fulfilling. So I'm a pass on both of those. All right, Al. Uh, I I belong to the Mile High Club. It was on a private plane, of course. So Q, you don't have to worry about doing it public if you're doing it private or commercial if you've got a private plane. And it's prefer what what sex do I prefer? What type of sex? I like it all. Makeup sex, angry angry sex, rough sex, playful sex, loving sex, role play sex. Put it all on the dance card for me. I'm here for it all. Mile High Club as well, also private and uh. It was one time. Do private count though? Because yeah. I think when most people, are, I think when most people are referring to Mile High, mm-hmm. it's the secrecy of exactly. creeping off in the bathroom. I mean, if I, yeah, if the flight attendant and the pilot know we in the back hunching. Matter of fact, if I'm on a private plane, bitch, we ain't going to the bathroom. Captain, close that curtain real quick. Drop a leg up the partition, please. We hunching right there on the sofa. That's what we did. We're in the middle, but it was a real big plane too. So it was, it was fun time, but yeah, it's not, it's not the same. You're right. The the whole thing is like you were sneaking and the other passengers on the plane. Uh, Okay. Um, Let's see. Eric Arnold says as a civilian, I might try, but fail. Natasha Williams says makeup sex is the bomb, but nicely said Q. All right. That was a lot of fun. Now staying on the topic of sex, the rapper Trina recently decided to put pregnancy rumors to, to bed after fans concluded the rap artist was, you know, with child. After seeing her BT performance, are y'all tired of the trolls body shaming women or do they have the right to say something? Al? Yeah, I guess I'm, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. For me, Trina can't do any wrong. She was thicker than a snicker. She still looked good to me. Um, but I can imagine that this made, it made her sad or it made her like think, well, damn, I'm working on it. Does everybody have to chime in? That's kind of how I think entertainers probably review it. Because as an entertainer, your weight is your dollar, right? So I don't know. I feel sorry for her, but she still looked good. So I don't think there's a problem. All right. Q? I don't think she deserves to be trolled whatsoever. I don't think she she deserves to be spoken about negatively whatsoever. But I do think it is completely outrageous for you to show up on people's TV screen looking any way different than they're used to seeing you. Shorter, skinnier, taller, fatter, different hair color, different skin tone, and not expect a reaction, all right? People are human and they only go off of what they see. And sometimes their observations may or may not strike a nerve. I don't think the lion's share of people were setting out to hurt Trina's feelings. They were just simply observing, oh, shit, she's gotten bigger since the last time that we've seen her. And I don't think it's also unreasonable to assume when a woman puts on a certain amount of weight and it's held in her stomach place 
that she might be pregnant. I think that those are reasonable assumptions and curiosities. I do too, even though I, I've been a victim of that, especially right here in this show, in this chat. When I gained, I gained 30 pounds when I moved to Texas and I had a, a lot of struggles Then I had that weird thing that happened with my face and my face was like swollen and it happened for like two months. I remember. I, I had um allergic reaction to uh, some antibiotics and I had filler in my face a long time ago and it caused a chemical reaction and my face, ex they would not go down. And I already felt ugly and insecure and I knew that I had to be on camera every day, every other day. And to read that she's pregnant, she's pregnant, she's pregnant when you know you're not and you kind of wanted to at one point, it does hurt, but I also can't not expect the people to say something. If you look different, you, I mean, I, I get it, I get it, but just try to be nice about it. Say it in a nice way. All right, I want to thank our guests tonight, Paul J. Parker and my co-host, Al Reynolds and Funky Dineva. Always a fun time. Thank you for watching us on YouTube. Stay tuned for Black Water Horse Movies. Catch it on our YouTube channel and website. We will see y'all tomorrow, but if anyone that's going to be in New Orleans this weekend, I'll be hosting something with the White House on Friday. I'm going to post details. Q is hosting a brunch on Saturday. Go on my Instagram, get the information for the brunch. And Al, you're going to be down there. We're going to try to do a photo shoot. Hey. We're going to turn up. All right, y'all. We will see y'all back here tomorrow. Take care.